Someone that knows all about that challenge is the head coach, Sandy Brundello. Sandy, it's great to see you. Now, uh, you're getting ready for a top of the standings clash against Connecticut tomorrow in the WNBA. You're watching these warm-up games with half a squad of the Opals back in Australia. You're picking a squad. Uh, my first question is, how are you doing all this and how are you feeling? Uh, yeah, well, thanks, number one, uh, Kane. Thanks for having me on the show today. But, look, it's it's been a lot, but it's really it's just an exciting time. Uh, you know, Olympic Games uh, is very special. I've got a great staff behind me and, and did great preparation with our games in Japan, China, and obviously the, the balling series in Melbourne. Uh, the most difficult thing is obviously to pick that final 12. But now that it's picked, um, you know, excitement, it's uh, we're almost, uh, almost time to get together again. Yeah, and I think we all... Uh, for both teams, the Opals, the, the Boomers, whether it's a three-by-three three team, we look at the preparation, but uh, this is a challenge that I guess you're used to now where these tournaments f uh, fall in the middle of a WNBA season. Is that a bigger challenge as what we make it? I, I guess you're probably used to this process now. Yeah, look, it, it's not an ideal challenge, but this is just, um, you know, basketball as it is, everyone wants to play in the WNBA. I coach in the WNBA. Uh, we have seven players that were chosen for the Opals to go to, to Paris, uh, can play here. So, you know, for me, it is what it is at the moment. We've had, you know, I've been in the program for quite some time now. I think that continuity, um, players are used to me. I'm used to them. They're used to, obviously, yeah, the system that we run. Um, and then it's just about fine-tuning when we get together. So, um, you know, it's uh, we, ideally you would love more preparation, uh, but I, I think that the, the time we spent in the past certainly helps us. Yeah, and for uh, Olympic debutantes anyway in the final squad of 12, uh, Wickham and Wallace, who we know we saw at the World Cup, Jade Melbourne's been around the team and Izzy Borlase. If I focus on the two uh, younger girls with Borlase and Melbourne, it, how much of this is you want to bring the next generation through and give them experience, but the other part of this is how well they've played and how much they forced their way into the squad? Yeah, it came, to be quite honest, they forced their way into the squad. It, it Obviously, it's great. I think it's great to have a balanced uh, group, and I think we've achieved that. We've got some great leadership. We've got some, you know, players that have been there, done that. We've also got a, a mixture of, of youth in there as well, and that's with Jade and Isabel, Isabel Borlase. Uh, they're stars, and they continue to get better and better every year. I think you see Jade. I think uh, it was a blessing in disguise that she was traded to Washington. She's getting more minutes there, and you see that she continues to get um, – just grow her game. And I think the speed that she brings is going to be critical for us in Paris. And then Isabel, I mean, she's just a, she's a stud. You know, sometimes I say she's got a little bit like Lauren Jackson. No one can be Lauren Jackson, but she's got the it factor. I think she has, she has no fear. Uh, she's very poised for a young athlete. Uh, so excited just to see, um, you know, how they go in their first Olympics. Uh, what can you take uh, from this group that you've got coming up and, particularly if you go back to that World Cup a couple of years ago where you did play France in the opener, you, you played Canada twice, there's some familiarity there. Does that help or is it too far gone now uh, to look back at those games and take whatever you can from perhaps a familiar opponent? Yeah, look, I think it all helps, but then it's two years past two. So we know the players. I think we've had so much experience. A lot of the players play in the WNBA as well. And, um, you know, I've coached a few from uh, France too and, uh, you know, we were disappointed. We we probably had the most nerves in that French game back in the World Cup being in the home country. Um, it's on the other foot now. We play them in the third game. It's going to be a very vocal crowd. But, um, look, like we feel confident. We're confident in the players that we have, the chemistry that we build over these last few years. And now it's about just going out there and, and performing at our best. Now, some of uh, the players that missed out, as they would be in any team when the, the teams are so strong, the squads are so strong, are going to feel unlucky. And... Uh, when you come out and you play China, who are ranked so high in the world and really you're dominant in both of those games, but you know you've got so much WNBA talent coming in. Uh, I'm not sure if you want to go down the path and naming names, but uh, what were the, the really final decisions and, and names that were thrown up there? Because I know that there were some hard luck stories. Yeah, no, there certainly there certainly was, and, and and that's the most difficult part of my job. Um, you know, obviously with the the assistant coaches naming that final twelve, and it's always important going into Olympic Games is or any major tournament is making sure we're very balanced. I think we got great versatility, athleticism, and then it's about how the combinations work together. And and we could have went, um, uh, you know, a, a few different ways there, but in the end, I think we picked the strongest group we could. You know, obviously Darcy Garvin, she hasn't put a foot forward and, uh, wrong with us in the last few years, but you know 
know, she, I suppose, had a little bit of injury in the beginning and it was just we have so much depth now in that uh, in that post spot with Lauren Jackson coming back. You know, Alana Smith has had a really solid year in the WNBA as well. Um, and then, you know, we got, you know, in the past we haven't had many point guards, but now we've got a, an abundance of point guards and, you know, tough decisions made there. But we thought we, we went um, with what, you know, has worked with for us in the past. I think the players that had a great Brazil uh, tournament and, and uh, you know, Semi and Jade. And then obviously Christy Wallace was with us at the World Cup. So uh, we've got good versatility, but obviously there's still some, you know, players unlucky to to not make it, but their time will come. They'll be, uh, they're Opals already, but they'll they'll definitely compete in major tournaments uh, moving forward. Yeah, so if we go back a, a few years to Sydney 2000 and you're a teammate of Lauren Jackson, I, I'm sure you thought <laughs> you were going to be head coach of uh, LJ in the Olympics 24 years later. So how does it feel to finally get here? Yeah, you can always dream, can't you? I mean, um, that will always go down as a, as a special moment in in my playing career, just, um, you know, winning that silver medal in front of our home crowd and and then playing, you know, for my first, no, well, second major tournament with uh, the great Lauren Jackson. And, and what an amazing story. It's really inspiring uh, just for her to come back to that World Cup and then put 30 points on Canada for, to get us that bronze medal. Um, and then really, you know, overcoming major injuries and... I oh, know she did. She said, "I spagger. I think I still want to try and get to Paris." And I said, "Well, you proved uh, you proved us all wrong in the first one, uh, getting us to the World Cup." And but I think she's in way better shape now. Um, you know, I think she can play a real key role for us. But amazing, amazing, amazing story. And I'm sure uh, uh, I think she has to pinch herself at, at times as well because uh, you know hasn't been to an Olympic since uh, London. So that's a long time. Yeah, I think uh, going back to Sydney a couple of years ago, I, I think I probably apologised to you because I said, look, I know there's great stories on this team. I keep asking you about LJ, but it is the headline, no doubt. So uh, LJ did speak with ESPN a few days ago and she described herself that it is different now because she's not so much the superstar of this team, uh, but more of a role player. And while I certainly understand the sentiment, we've seen time and time again, and even recently, that she is still a very dominant player as well. So what do you make of that? Because to me, this is still an incredibly important part of this team. Yeah, no, it certainly is. I think all five posts that we've chosen, um, you know, could really put their hand up. And I talked about that versatility. There's so many different styles globally, how, how the countries play. Um, but look, I think Lauren just, she's got this great inside-outside attack. Uh, she's shooting the ball well. You know, I think she's a way better player than what she was at the World Cup. She's fitter. Um, she's moving much better as well. Uh, but, you know, another thing that we forget, you know, and what I love about Lauren, you're going into a major tournament, is that mentality. Um, you know, she's a, she's a winner. And I think a, a lot, the players get a lot of confidence just by seeing her beside us. But, you know, we got Ezzy Mabego, I mean, Alana Smith, Kayla George, Mariana Toller and Lauren. I mean, really great depth there. And then it's just working out what works best for us from, you know, from game to game. And uh, we'll make those decisions, obviously, with what we see on the floor. Yeah, the team is absolutely loaded. We can't wait to see uh, what the Opals can do in Paris. Uh, Sandy, always appreciate time with you. And uh, you have got a big game tomorrow against the Connecticut Sun, both teams 17 and 4. So hopefully you get some sleep. Uh, good luck tomorrow. Thanks, Kane.